We're going to show you today how to join your wings together, sand in your dihedral, and then put on uh, the ailerons and install the servo. First thing you need to have is a good piece of sandpaper. I've got 120 grit on the one side, I've got 80 grit on the other side. It's just a piece of three quarter inch plywood. I sprayed adhesive on it to get it to, to uh, stick and it just works wonderfully for this. I've got my wings already produced. They're a matching pair, the same width to both ends. I've got them paper coated. I showed you that in a different video prior to this. What I need to do now, once I've decided that they're a good pair and they have the same size and the same taper here, is I need to make sure that I'm working from the top side up so that I can tilt it inward rotate it there. I want a very specific dihedral on this and I've got to play with it a little bit to do it. But I'm going to put it, I'm going to watch the back side so I can see when I'm all the way down. As soon as I hit my paper on the, on the low side, I've now got a perfectly smooth and prepared section. Now if I match that with my other one, you notice that I'm still relatively flat because this one wasn't very straight either. I'll do the same logic with it. Once I sand it down to my paper here, not quite down far enough, you can see that I've got still a little bit of uh, the foam that hasn't been disturbed. You want to get it to where it's all down completely. If you don't, you don't get a good bond when you glue it. Okay, that's a lot better. Now I've got just one little small section there, and I'm okay with that for now. Now I'm going to test it to make sure that my wings have got good dihedral. Now, looks like I still need to get just a little bit finer fit with those. That'll come on the next side. And I also have a significantly too much dihedral for the plane that I'm looking for, but given the fact we're only talking less than a sixteenth of an inch, I'm going to take the sandpaper to the smooth side, smoother side, I'm going to back it off just a little bit so it's not quite such a great angle. Sand it to where it's a lot smoother, do it with both of them, backing off my dihedral with a very small amount, the biggest thing that I want to make sure I've got here is that I'm uniformly smooth all the way across. Now when I put them in there, I've got a lot better dihedral, no problem, I can deal with that. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the ends so that I can install just a small amount of uh, balsa. I'll put a balsa triangle out there. Now, I'm going to trim up quite a bit of it, as much as I can to start with, even though it will sand off. Okay, now, once I've got that, you can see my foam core exposed. If I sand that tip down, it doesn't take long at all to sand the paper right off of that. Now, I do want a relatively good one. I'm not going to install my balsa tips today because I don't have balsa with me and that's all right. You can see that that's all right long. Smooth those up and that one's ready for my balsa tips. Now that wing is actually ready to cut the, the uh, um, aileron out of it. I'll do that in just a second. Okay, I've got both of my tips ready to go. I'll take care of them another time. You can actually leave those if you wanted. It's not a big deal. You just leave them on paper if you uh, didn't want quite such a finished aircraft. And this one doesn't really matter too much to me for a similar reason. I'm doing this for uh, students of mine to teach them how to fly model airplanes. I do want to clean up. This will be the last chance I get to polish up that without it being so flimsy I can hardly work with it. So now I've got my Edge is all sanded up, my dihedral is ready, that can be glued together, but before I do that I want to cut my aileron into it. So, I need to measure this, mark it as best I can. I 
I'd rather use a pencil if I could. I'm going to come back about an inch and a half all the way up there. It's important to get a good ruler here. I'm going to come in no more than about two inches. My body is about two inches wide, the fuselage. So I come in two inches. Put myself some marks. Those marks will go away when I paint it. It's not a big deal. Got to straight with my fuselage now. Get a good straight ruler. Make your mark with a pencil. Now that's an awful wide aileron, but you'll see why it's important later on. If I were putting a servo in the wing itself, it would be different, which I'm not. So I'm going to go ahead and put it right in the center between the two and have a single servo run both of those. Now, to cut it, I use a carpet knife. These things are relatively inexpensive. You can get them down at your hardware store. They're about $8. The blades are super sharp. You've got to be really, really careful with those. And you can use them either side, but they are very, very dangerous. Okay, just make sure that you get cut all through all the way. Then you're going to want to take a good straight edge. Use the same approach to it, following it along. If you'll use a thicker straight edge along here, you can't cut quite as deep on it but you come up square and it's a, a trade-off because once you've got a single track through there, now I've got it straight, I can just go ahead and let the foam itself guide me through my next cut. I know. Got a little deep on that one and I shouldn't have gone quite so hard and fast. It actually kicked out a little bit on me. But that's alright, we'll deal with that a little bit later. You want to be real careful on this because if you slice yourself open, that's a hazard you run. But you, with a little practice, you can do these. You can run those knives relatively easy. Okay, now I've got an aileron right there. You see how I kicked a little bit of the foam out of there? I can sand that up relatively easy with my smooth sand The hinges on this one. I'm actually going to put. Uh, uh, packing tape so that it's a little bit flexible. I do need to cut a little bit more of this off so that it will fold the one direction. I will choose on this one to take it from the bottom side so that my top side, which is the part you usually see, will have about a sixteenth of an inch gap and then I don't take it too far over. So I've got to cut that back side now, off. Now, once I've got both of these cut, we'll glue these together. I'm going to put a, set, a piece of uh, fiberglass tape over the top of them and then over the top of the fiberglass tape I will also put another piece of paper so it's paintable. A good idea would be to put a dowel rod in between in a couple spots to give it a little bit of strength. Really given the size of this plane and the way we're going to join it together that's not as necessary. It'd just be as efficient to simply put a piece of, of the uh, strapping tape around it but I'll probably do both.